Let me know if I should stop or not. Can we start? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, this uh, webinar, web conference. Welcome to the world of ChatGPT. What is the right level of regulation investment so that Europe can be both sufficiently sovereign and have a role in the battle for global digital leadership? Uh, this is the uh, a webinar that is preparing the fourth vision Pontignano conference on the future of Europe, which will take place on the 8th, 10th of June 2023. My name is Thibaut Muzerg. I am senior advisor at the International Republican Institute, and uh, I was uh, tasked uh, by uh, Vision uh, to uh, moderate this uh, panel, which uh, is uh, promising to be extremely uh, interesting. Before we dive into it and before uh, we get uh, into the, the, the topic. I would like uh, to give uh, uh, the floor to uh, Clara uh, Donati to give you some information, important information about uh, about the topic and about the methodology. Uh, as this seminar, as I said, is the uh, uh, is a preparatory uh, discussion ahead of the uh, the, the the fourth vision uh, Pontigiano Conference on the Future of Europe. So, Clara, the, I leave you the floor uh, to. Uh, to discuss, except if Francesco is not uh, is is available, but I I, I understand that he is uh, taken in the in, in the train with uh, uh, with big delays. So uh, Francesco, can you can can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. But I'm very happy to to leave the floor to to Clara. Uh, very sorry, but yes, I'm uh, very much uh, engaged with the uh, old economy before I can jump into the new one. So Clara. Uh, Yes. Can you go ahead with the uh, short Hello. introduction to the conference the method and the role of the seminar? Yes. Hello, everyone. Clara? Yes, I'm here. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry, but my video okay. I don't know if it doesn't work. Thank you. But I'm Clara Donati. I'm the event coordinator from Vision Think Tank and advisor. We would like to begin this uh, meeting with a, a short introduction to the 2023 Siena Conference, which is now less than a month away. The objective of the uh, seminar, uh, and thank you all for participating, is to start a conversation of one of the four working groups that will meet uh, in Siena in, uh, in, later in June. This conference is um, a three-day meeting convened by Vision and the University of Siena with support of other partners and where uh, 70 visionaries will gather to discuss the European future and its most recent challenge within uh, a really um, what we like to call informal framework. One of the main uh, um, characteristic of this um, all these vision initiatives and conference is the ambition, ambitious objective of, become, of becoming a real problem solving platform where individuals from different backgrounds and political ideas can come together to find uh, a common ground. I will show you now the uh, a short, very short PowerPoint presentation that we made to try to explain this. Um, the vision um, process. Uh, we will try in this, in all vision conferences, and especially in this one, which is about the future of Europe, we will try to go beyond what, what are the ideolo different ideologies. The conference will try to bring, it will, in fact, we will be, bring together five of the European political foundation 
of the European Parliament, as well as different individual individuals from different professional backgrounds, such as business, uh, academics, regulatory fields. And we also have uh, participants from different uh, and distant, maybe ge geographic areas. The process that we are in, uh, experimenting in Siena uh, is starts from the concept paper that Vision wrote, which outlines each problem solving group sessions. This year concept note is based on uh, the results of last year final document of the conference, the 2022 Pontignano paper. This year we will have the students of the University of Siena that are working on this concept paper and we are organizing these webinars to assist them also in preparing their final version that they will present in, uh, in Siena. This meeting today will contribute as one of the um, inputs for the students' work. These documents, these uh, concept notes, will be discussed in Siena by all the conference participants who will be divided into the four problem-solving groups, groups. And the outcome of these sessions will be presented on um, the last day, on the Saturday 10th of the last day of the conference, and will be uh, all composed a final Pontignano paper of 2023 which will be shared with the media, with the European institution, even nationals in, in, national institutions. The hope that we have in our all our initiatives is to have, by the end of the conference, new, fresh idea, ideas and solution that can uh, help to uh, challenge the um, prejudice and to uh, answer, try to answer questions regarding Europe's future. And we think that maybe this different structure that we are applying to the Siena conference can encourage this, this outcome. So I thank you everyone. And uh, I look forward to hearing your views on this specific and interested problem solving group. So thank you all. Thank you very much, Clara. And uh, uh, this is a this is great because we have a methodology now, so we're going to be able to uh, jump dive straight into uh, the, the the topic. And it's pretty easy to jump into that topic because it, it's pretty much of actuality. I think the the eruption of uh, uh, Chat GPT into the uh, public domain, so to speak, has uh, put the whole question of artificial intelligence to the forefront. Uh, of this public debate and uh, revealed uh, another technological leapfrog with potentially momentous consequences uh, for for our lives, uh, pretty much like social media and uh, the portable uh, uh, the portable internet industry uh, became in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Uh, so obviously, when we're talking about the future of AI, we're, we're pretty much doing science fiction because uh, AI is not necessarily tech, is not necessarily a linear thing. And, and we, we, we talk about a future that an instrument in which we don't have necessarily all uh, uh, control. Uh, and what we're, what we're doing is trying to anticipate things that are, by, by, by definition, not necessarily uh, uh, anticipable. Um, there are, if, if I look at how things have been, there have been two schools of thought, and maybe I will ask each of our speakers to 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 say a word about where they stand on these on these two schools of thought. The techno optimists who see opportunities everywhere and sources of new wealth and improvements for uh, human uh, uh, human advancement, uh, including uh, because the bar barriers of entry are quite low at least for now in terms of AI. Uh, and there's the tech, there you have the techno pessimists on the other side who may not see apocalypse now, but uh, see a lot of bads uh, and potential downsides to uh, uh, to the, the eruption of AI in terms of job losses, but also in terms of disinformation, as the tool has actually proven uh, to to show issues of reliability at least at this uh, particular stage. So coming from these two two schools of thought, we've seen two government vision that have sort of. Uh, included both sides of the argument. The, the American one is one of laissez-faire with incitements for self-regulation and focus on investment for research and profit. Uh, and another one, uh, a Chinese vision that is much more hands-on, authoritarian, and focused on uh, social control, you would say. Uh, in, the, in between that, 
uh, and without necessarily all the big tech uh, uh, giants to, uh, uh, to, to serve this vision, but with a huge regulatory po power, you may have a European vision uh, that could emerge that would seek to regulate, but also to create an AI industry uh, via investment schemes. But the question obviously is where and what exactly would be a European uh, uh, vision uh, and what would it uh, rely uh, on? So all these questions uh, I would like to ask to our uh, panelists and, and much more, of course, uh, and um, I'm going to present them very quickly in order uh, of appearance. Uh, uh, Chiara Carozza first, who is program coordinator of the Center for a Digital Society at the European uh, University Institute. Uh, Paul Toomey, uh, Australian businessman and public policy executive at initiative director for uh, digital governance at the uh, new institute. Uh, we have Francesco uh, Cassetti, who is a uh, policy and research officer at the European Liberal Forum, which is part of ALDE and also a lecturer at VUB, the uh, Freie Universität uh, of Brussels in Belgium. Uh, Eleonora Faina, uh, Director General of uh, Anitech as Inform, uh, which is the Italian Association for Information and Communication Technology, which is a member of Cofindustria. And uh, uh, last but not least, Carlo Alberto Carnevale Maffe, uh, Associate Professor of Strategy at uh, the Bocconi uh, University School of Management. So uh, without further ado, I, I realize that I've, I've already spoken quite a lot. Uh, I'm going to give the floor uh, to Chiara Carozza and maybe ask her uh, this question, are you a techno-optimist a, a techno or a, a, a techno-pessimist? And maybe that will yes. inform us on your, uh, on your approach afterwards. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Thibault, for uh, for the floor. Actually, I won't sign for any of these uh, two <laughs> alternatives. As an academic, uh, my work is mostly focusing on trying to, to, to understand uh, uh, what's happening at the moment, I think, with the AI in particular, but in general, with the regulation of digital technologies and digital markets in Europe, it's already a big task. Try to understand what is what is what is happening at the moment. So um, I try. I will stick. I think I will stick to the um, kind of assignment that I've been given for uh, for this uh, for this session, which is introducing very very quickly the key ideas, uh, the key starting points of the concept note uh, produced by Vision uh, for uh, kicking off the discussion. And then I will leave to the other uh, discussant to express their, their position, uh, position on that. So um, this concept note focuses on the equilibrium between regulation of digital technologies and digital markets and, and innovation and poses a very specific question, which is what is the right and very I, I must say, very tough question. What is the right level of regulation and investment so that Europe can play a role uh, in this battle, in this global uh, battle for digital leadership between the US, China, and India, as also Tibor was mentioning, was mentioning before. And I think the starting um, idea or, or uh, thing that from, from, from where we can start to discuss that is this powerful discourse that Europe, the European Commission has put forward in the last years, which is the one of technological sovereignty. And there are other many expressions that are used as synonymous of that, but I mean, technological sovereignty in the words of Ursula von der Leyen is the idea that we must have mastery and ownership of key te technologies in Europe. And by key technologies, we mean edge computing, quantum technologies, blockchain, cloud technology, semiconductor, and of course, uh, uh, artificial intelligence. And this idea is often linked, uh, uh, connected to the, to the vision of the human-centric approach to digital transition that has also been proposed uh, very often uh, and uh, very recently also in the declaration of, of digital rights um, of the European Union, according which, uh, of course, Europe has to protect. So digital development, digital transition has to happen in the protection by protecting the European values and the associated uh, civil rights. So the concept argument that, that while some 
given that this is the general uh, ideological or let's say um, discursive framework in which uh, uh, Europe is, is moving at the moment, uh, the concept arguments that uh, while some of the European countries have been quite active in their attempt to create national champions, basically Europe is failing to articulate this concept uh, into a proper set of effective uh, policies and is focusing uh, more or mostly on, on regulation. So apparently uh, Europe has, has already been left out of the battle for global digital leadership and has taken the role of rule setter or standard setter uh, rather than being a proper player uh, in this game for, for technological leadership. And of course, artificial intelligence is discussed in the context of this concept note as a very uh, powerful and uh, uh, a significant uh, example of this approach and of the potential approaches, uh, potential problems that this approach can, can bring uh, with it. And these are summarized into three main kind of problems. First one is a problem of definition. No? So what exactly are we regulating? And the AI, again, is a very good example because we know of the... Um, discussion in the context of the European Parliament to uh, to kind of frame what exactly, uh, to define what exactly is, is AI. And uh, this is controversial even into the uh, scientific community. I was reading the other day an article by Jarn Lanier, on the New York Times, uh, whose title is There is no AI. Uh, so, I mean, there is a controversy also, what exactly, uh, what is the state of the, what, what exactly this, this technology, at what stage exactly this technology is at the moment. So this is a first problem, a problem of definition. A second problem is defined very, uh, very nicely as a shooting into uh, our own foot effect. So here's the idea, the, the problem is what kind of self-harming or unintended effect uh, early regulation on these technologies can, can produce. And for example, uh, while we can, of course, share the concerns related to some of the applications uh, of AI, such as uh, social scoring or biometric identification, uh, on the one side, uh, our concern won't prevent others, other countries to take a lead in these applications. And on the other, um, this could also limit the potential that some of these applications can have to produce some good social uh, outcomes. So second uh, group of problems, third group of problems identified in the concept paper is the implementation problem. And uh, now we don't have uh, yet a final version of the AI Act proposal, but we know that the approach that, the, that the, has been chosen is a risk-based approach. And there is already a lot of discussion about uh, the effective, effectiveness of this kind of approach, because we have there defined in the, in the AI Act four categories of risk. Uh, these are static categories that depends on the fields of application. So someone is saying, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, suggesting that this may prove inadequate to address uh, application that comes from something that we no is a general purpose technologies. So uh, this, this regulation uh, that they're creating can, can, can become very easily uh, inadequate or ineffective. Other kind of implementation problem comes from the fact uh, that this, uh, the, 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 the merging framework, the, the, the merging framework for AI needs to be applied um, in articulation with a number of other regulations, such as the one on data, uh, data Act, uh, Data Governance, uh, uh, Data Governance Act, and so this can uh, present some 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 issues, and also with all the regulation uh, that that are um, addressed to uh, big tech, so the DSA, the Digital Service Act, and the DMA, the Digital Markets Act. So on, I mean both. Uh, uh, privacy uh, policy and regulation and competition policy and antitrust, they are all, in a way, also AI policy. They are also, in a way, going to affect the evolution and the uh, development of, of this technology uh, in Europe. And so uh, I think this was pretty much uh, the state of the art of what is in the concept paper. I won't take more time. I have more things to say, but maybe I can take some time later. Um, probably um, 
Clara, if you want to, to share the, the last slide of the PowerPoint, it was prepared by Francesco. I don't know if he has the possibility to jump in because that was the question that he formulated for the also for the discussion. Maybe we can just uh, see them very quickly. Or maybe just later when Francesco will be will be able to, to join uh in a proper yes no, I'm, okay I'm here i'm i'm here i'm okay. here uh, maybe he wants to add something no 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 <clears throat> uh, just very very briefly uh, here here you have it yeah uh, um well uh, it is uh, basically uh, just a suggestion in terms of approach we are talking about something uh, which is uh, not yet uh, uh, certain it's very far from certain so we very much uh, believe that uh, one idea uh, would be to, to to stress the need to to do experiments it's something that the european commission has already um, is already um, thought about with the with the sandbox concept but that's very important we need to be experimental we need to be open because we still do not know uh, we, uh, what is the impact of regulation and number two as far as uh, especially investments are concerned one uh, one one uh, one thing that we would suggest is to go from uh, uh, vertical um, uh, technologies like artificial intelligence that, are, that again is not exactly definable to horizontal so for instance let's uh, let's uh, uh, start thinking uh, more intensely to to sectors like healthcare and education, and uh, therefore uh, uh, try to then understand what kind of problems uh, uh, can technologies uh, solve. Uh, I will uh, I will leave the floor to, to to the others because again I I'm still trying to to get uh, back to the to a normal uh, uh, desktop and um, join the conversation. Thank you. You're muted, Thibault. You're muted. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said to Frances, as I was saying, but you didn't hear me, uh, Francesco and Chiara, for uh, uh, setting the, the 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 terms of of the debate in this way. Um, I'd like to turn to Paul now, and and maybe Paul can give us a, uh, a, a I guess would give us a, a more uh, private sector uh, oriented uh, uh, answer to the to 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 these questions. So. Uh, in, in the, the 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 fight or the the balance rather between regulation and experiment, where where, where do you stand? Uh, well, maybe I won't give you a private sector answer so, so much as I'm, I might share some thinking of uh, of a group of about seventy or eighty international experts that I've been leading for the last couple of years, specifically on this uh, the set of issues around. Uh, what what does what does personal data mean throughout the whole cascading uh, um, uh, structures for 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 the information economy, including where AI is now coming out? And uh, somebody mentioned before the issues of uh, issue of sovereignty and European sovereignty. All of this all of this activity takes place across a network which was specifically designed not to have geographic boundaries. It's a topological network which actually reinforces. Uh, economies of scale. That's why we've seen the, the, the difficulties of monopoly that have emerged. And the more we've considered, the more you, you think about that sort of a network, it's actually in giving sovereignty to the individual and sovereignty to the individual about their personal data and how they get used and how they themselves play a role in, in control is a way in which you, you, you can build de facto sovereignty in, in large respects around as you further up the application layer as you go. Um, I, we've we've done a quite a major report on this. Um, I've shared it with the on the list chat, and maybe the, it'll be shared with the rest of the people on 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 the webinar. Um, looking at you know at, at the bottom line that this is the right time at the end of the, at this mandate at the end of this mandate, and for the last five years of work of the of the commission, when we look at the new mandate, it's actually the right time for European citizens to really have control over their personal data. Um, you know, potentially is defined by GDPR and the way in which it way in which it gets used, and more importantly, to be empowered to negotiate the terms under which it is used, and not just operating as individuals, but operating with with um, 
rights of association and rights of representation such that we can shift the mix of the of, of the power structure. What we essentially have at the moment is an e we've got four or five billion people around the world who operate in an e-commerce market, which essentially runs as a market. But in the in the in the in the, in the manipulation and the use of personal information and, and personal data, which is the underlying part of that market, the underground part of the market, it's not a market. It's a form of digital husbandry. So it's serfdom. And people's data is collected out. And the people who are the influencers and the and and the data aggregators and the platforms, they have a market. It's worth 700 billion to a trillion dollars worth of money going on there. But the consumers are not treated as consumers. They're treated just as a, as a source of, 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 of siphoning. Shifting that balance in which Europe is particularly well positioned because of the work it's done to date, shifting that balance can shift the whole discussion about are you a player in the market? 450 million people who are actually able to negotiate terms in which their data is used, terms in which people can access it, terms in which companies could deal with it, terms in which uh, markets, um, uh, uh, public goods, data, data trusts, et cetera, can interact, shifts, the tr shifts fundamentally the power structures within that and importantly sets up other incentives which are not just around advertising. And so I think, uh, you know, we can talk about this in greater detail uh, in the conference, but I think there's a great opportunity for the next mandate for the European, where Europe's achieved today to go to the next sort of, a lot of the legislation tracks in place to achieve this, but go to the next stage of shifting that power balance. We'll have a cascading effect around, around the world. And I've just been hearing this in the last week, even discussions with some of the very large American corporations. AI has so unsettled everybody. And everybody, even those who are practitioners in it, are calling for regulation around it. Being able to think about how individuals' data and control is data is actually controlled and negotiated in terms returned to them is a key liberal and democratic way to start putting some boundaries around the innovation. It's not sort of saying heavy handed yes or no, but puts empowered market forces into trying to set some boundaries about how that will evolve. So I think that's an interesting area to explore. Thank you uh, very much, Paul. That was uh, super interesting, and uh, indeed, I mean, I think it's it's very interesting that you you really put the back the center of the conversation, which is data. People think about technology, but it's actually tech, tech, the 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 AI technology is powered of obviously by chips and by uh, and, and 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 by other things. But mostly, you can't do AI, at least the conversational AI that we know, without. Uh, uh, without data, and uh, uh, I guess this idea of sovereignty, individual sovereignty, uh, uh, as a way to have a, a European sovereignty, is a is, is an interesting way to to look at it. And I, I would guess that it would be of interest to Francesco uh, Capelletti, who has a. Uh, a, a liberal researcher uh, will find that uh, uh, a, a liberal argument uh, empowering the ind individual to empower the state uh, uh, and to empower business would be an interesting an interesting way to look forward. So, uh, Francesco, can I can I leave the floor to you so that you can develop your idea? Oh, absolutely! Thank you, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, first of all, Vision, for having me and for uh, the other speakers to setting up the scene because it was, it's, I think it's not only topical, but it's a very forward-looking discussion today here. Um, actually, I want also to get back to the previous uh, question that you asked. Um, if, if I'm tech pessimist or positivist, I mean, I am a tech neutral and I think that everyone should be, as you know, um, a bit emerged from... Um, other speakers, but technology should be considered as neutral. And if you consider tech neutrality as a milestone on the digital landscape, um, the picture around AI becomes quite complicated because it, then it depends on how do you use AI, which exactly as Paul just mentioned is all about data. I mean, we are, we are, we are generate data generators ourselves when we use um, the applications and, and, and data is uh, by a certain extent, at least for uh, the digital market at oil of um, today's digital economy. Um, before answering to your question about the market and, and how the EU should position itself, I think that uh, before thinking about the market and 
for the EU not to lose another race uh, in, 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 in technology, um, we should think about a serious discuss, discussion about the concerns coming from AI. Um, yes, someone mentioned job, someone mentioned disinformation, um, but also manipulation of data, uh, which is not only infringing, you know, basic human rights when it comes to privacy, but also manipulating the behavior of uh, people online, you know, basically the, the, the advertisement uh, that, um, uh, that companies um, are tailoring based on your behavior on social media. Imagine with an AI algorithm what, what they can do, no? Um, and all this is a bit worrying, but I mean, I, I think that we are far away from a matrix uh, scenario when, when we have to be worried about the machines. And so in this sense, just to say, indeed, technology should be considered neutral. Um, I think that what uh, recently the EU lawmakers did with the AI Act is an interesting exercise uh, because it's meant of protecting um, citizens' best interests. So the risk-based approach also in this sense was a success story. Um, however, um, we are talking about something that it's way bigger than the EU only. So this, the, the word strategy for AI and the word strategy of the digital uh, industry is connecting the unconnected. We want to connect everything, you know, for full-scale deployment of 5G, we want to use satellites. There is actually uh, 3,400 uh, Starlink satellites, if I'm not wrong with the numbers, just saw a post on LinkedIn that are around while uh, uh, they were uh, just 5% of 10 years ago in terms of uh, satellite connectivity. So we will be connecting the unconnected and it comes with very complex challenges and very wide scale. So um, on the title of this uh, webinar, there was a question about regulation. And to confirm again, my idea of tech neutrality, that's 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 it. You know, you have to strike the balance between regulating and giving freedom to the use of such uh, tools like AI. Um, again, I think that AI Act is something that is okay at this moment, but the Brussels, the so-called Brussels effects, so, you know, the, the the best practice of Brussels creating rules for the digital world, the SADMA, uh, GDPR, etc., um, has to scale up a bit. And perhaps even going uh, uh, for, and this may be some else who disagree in this room, but to, to go for a um, treaty on AI, you know, at the international level. Um, and I mean, it's not Francesco Capelletti saying, but I think that uh, today the CEO of uh, uh, OpenAI went to testify about the risks of AI at the Congress in the US. So these signals are coming um are coming from different uh, places and i think should be taken into account um and then we can discuss also about the industry and how to foster the research and the applications uh, but uh, yeah ai is a, something that's uh, wide scale and should be tackled as a as a international uh, forum thank you Okay, thank you uh, very much, Francesco. And uh, you give me the perfect segue to uh, uh, the, the the next speaker because you you talked about uh, the Brussels the Brussels effect and 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 the effects on the industry. I mean, this is one of the questions: Can we have a real digital sovereignty and real tech sovereignty uh, without uh, the sort of of, of giant uh, of internet or, or, or tech giants uh, like uh, Apple or Amazon in the in the US? Uh, Weibo, Alibaba, and others uh, in in China. So I, I turn to Eleonora here as uh, a representative of the, uh, the 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 Italian uh, tech business. Uh, what what is what is your approach on this? And and uh, I mean, obviously, we're talking about about regulations, which is usually something that uh, that that business doesn't like. Uh, and investment, at least at least from a U.S. perspective, and investment which uh, U.S. always likes. But where where should the investment go? Because we don't want the the investment to go to waste either, right? So I would love to hear your 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 thoughts on this. Oh, thank you for your questions and thank you for the invitation. It's a very interesting panel, actually. I think so, so there are some points that are already raising in the discussion we're having on the IACs and all the. European Convention on Regulation on Digital Markets and Digital Sector. I think, first of all, let me say that at this time we are just discussing mainly what's happening with ChatGPT and all the generative AI. But actually, the AI is much more than this. And we have experience in some companies all around Italy, there are small SMEs and 
uh, we have like a, a little bit of road show around just to understand how many companies are already using AI different. One of the AI machine learning and so far that's so different, right? Uh, considering what, what we are discussing now, and AI is helping companies to doing something more, to be more productive, more efficient, more um, active in the markets, catching new new products, new processes, new new clients, and so far. So, I'm not coming from the first question on, on the discussion. I'm not a tech enthusiast by far, but I mean, I think the technology is helping um, everyone to be more. Um, Connected more, more efficient. All the companies are uh, pro the progress is a part of what we're doing every day. So I'm in a certain sense I'm techno neutral, but techno enthusiastic at the same time. Um, when we are talking about regulation on AI, we have to just remember that the investments that all the companies in the US and also in China are doing are huge amount of money such a huge amount of money and I think there are no there's no way to be part of the process without taking care of their role in the market and so it's better to talk about alliances and how to prevent in a certain sense of risk that we are aware to to to, to come in that have a discussion how to uh, stop to regulate or to uh, I don't know in a certain sense to avoid uh, in, in, in an awful use of technology. We just have to have a discussion on which are the risk. Sometimes the uh, European Union is trying to set rules that if you remember the discussion on generative AI just came later after the AI Act was already published. So it means that regulation is coming very, very slowly to consider what is the quick um, events of investments, research, innovation in departments that account a lot of engineering, a lot of data scientists, a lot of philosophers, a lot of people that are working hard on AI. So uh, regulation is uh, something that the companies just uh, react sometimes, but sometimes they look for regulation just to have a, a path of uh, what they, they have to do and can do. So it's better what, what kind of regulation. It's not a matter of regulation, yes, or regulation or not. At, at this time, we have AI Act, Data Act, the DGA, DMA, DSA, and so far we have already listed so many interventions and the Brussels expects is something that the Brussels Commission is trying to push to have a result on the influence of the market. But at the moment, when, when in the US they're discussing which are the risk of AI, they're calling them in the Congress to try to understand, but no way, there is no way to have a sort of AI act at US level. And you won't have any result if the US are not taking their part in the discussion as you want to, them to do. So uh, when continuing your, your main question, yes, I think you cannot talk about AI without talking US companies. I think they are part of the discussion. They're the main actor and they have a lot of responsibility, but still, they have a lot of positive responsibilities because they they are now giving us all the instruments to use the AI in our process, in our industry, in other SMEs. And Italy, for example, or Europe in a certain sense, they need to have technology by their sides if they want to be more competitive in the next future. So don't be tech enthusiastic, but neither be technophobic. It just me try to understand the technology is the, the things you need to have if you want to go far and on a certain level uh when european union started i mean the european commission started to present the da act the second act i'm really worried about is a liability directive that's the point what when we are just discussing implementation of principles definitions and that's very relevant but the very uh, impact or the most relevant impact the AI will have in company relations will have will deal with the responsibility and when you call responsibility, you are just, you can face a reaction like, okay, if it comes to me and if responsibility is mine, I would probably react to just refusing technology. And that's what the risk I see uh, if the discussion go on that way, that we are just have reaction by small as most companies just to avoid to invest in, in technology if they feel that technology will cause them to be responsible for things they cannot control in a certain sense. So we, the, the, I mean, the, 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 we are like crossing a bridge. We are in the middle of a discussion. We can be 
uh, very um, tech enthusiastic. We are, we can support regulation because we have to be human centric approach and uh, all the all things are correct. I mean, I support them firmly, but please don't demand. I mean, don't forget that the, the technology approach from companies like they want to use them. Young people want to use technology. We have to think about the worst society is going towards and always try to understand that the needs we have, so I mean, in companies, in the, in, in, in the companies there, we need to have people that are able to understand what the AI is. So we have to have ethicists, we have to have privacy manager, we have to have technology, uh, technology experts, we have to have uh, cybersecurity experts. Then we have to have all the skills that we need to face uh, the changes that we surely will face too. Does mean I think there is no way to uh, to 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 react to the uh, fears that people are expressing expressing right now without thinking about how to give you instruments to face fears, and that's that that's what we're doing. We're trying to do with our companies here, especially for SMEs. There are the bulk of our economies, but still there are the weakness bulk of our economy if they are not uh, sufficiently. Uh, I mean, uh, able to to understand what are the risks and also the opportunities. Okay, super interesting. Thank you very much. I think it's it's very interesting that we we have something which seems like like I mean, interestingly, both individuals and companies are are asking for some sort of regulation. The question is getting the right one that that empowers both companies uh, and 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 individuals. We, we we're getting back to the. Uh, to the issues that that, that Paul were, uh, was uh, uh, was was presenting earlier on, uh, we've talked a lot about about regulation, and I guess that's very a very European way of uh, uh, of looking at it. We talked a lot about regulation, but very very little so far about investment. So maybe maybe we're going to continue about to talking about uh, regulation, but 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 I would I would like to try and see if we can get to talk about about investment. Uh, with uh, Carlo Alberto, Carnevale Maffe. Uh, I mean, where where can we? What would be the right the right choices, the right fields of investment? Because every, I mean, let's be honest. Everybody else, the Indians are investing. The Indian state is investing, investing uh, en masse. The Chinese state is investing en masse and making sure that every company goes into a very narrow uh, band of activities. The United States are also investing en masse to make sure that the, the private sector is not completely, uh, does not completely own uh, AI and tech in, uh, in general. I mean, if you look at the, uh, in the US, the level of investment in universities, uh, it, it's actually quite, uh, uh, quite remarkable to try and, and match the levels of investment from the private sector. So, uh, w where does Europe stand with that? And you know, as always, I'm asking the questions, but you're free to answer something completely different. You no, know, uh, uh, we 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 don't lack intelligence. We lack money and commitment. Definitely. Let me be very clear. This is the list of the agenda. I would suggest to European Union about AI. It's very simple. Uh, we need to be different. You were right. I mean, we can't just stay. Is stuck in the middle between US and, and China. We need to find our own way, which is not you know, following. It is anticipating on specific area. Uh, let me qualify my statement. First of all, the open source AI community needs a, a home and that home should be the European Union. Uh, there is an alternative way against the concentration and the risk of, uh, of uh, oligopoly, if not monopoly, given the economies of scale and this way to contrast uh, Concentration is to uh, support the open source AI community. And uh, there is a different uh, uh, architecture to be supported that there is a distributed computing architecture as opposed to hyperscale. We are very far from that. So I'll give you some data. But of course, uh, here the problem is to distribute uh, computing architecture and not to concentrate. The, uh, the other element is to establish very quickly a, a self sovereign identity framework with the Opal model instead of bringing data to the algorithm to do the vice versa, bringing algorithm to data under a uh, data wallet. Uh, final element, and here I follow Francesco Grillo in, in, the, in the, say, industrial policy. Europe is home to a specific social application, healthcare, education, sustainable mobility, uh, journalism. What we can do is to create data spaces and knowledge bases for AI application 
focused on uh, creating public goods, uh, typically European public goods, instead of privatizing the results of, uh, of uh, um, AI, um, demonstrate to the world that is one of the most fundamental in new institution. For me, AI is an institution, not even a technology. It's, it's a piece of, it's a layer of, it's like democracy. Uh, it's not a technology. It, well, it is a technology. The way we European want to use it is as a, as a, as a foundation of a new layer of, of democracy. And then finally, also because, uh, you know, recently you got bank uh, uh, bankruptcy in the US, also in Switzerland, can you imagine? Uh, so I think that Europe should be the place for AI applied to open banking and financial stability. Applying AI to the uh, to the uh, digital euro. Just give you briefly some data. We are not uh, missing uh, 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 human capital. Uh, the European Union is uh, uh, better than the United States in terms of total journal publication in the past ten years. Uh, well, China is ahead of everybody else. It's 40 40 percent of all publication in AI are from China, but US and UK are better than, the, uh, sorry, you, uh, European Union, UK are better than uh, than the US. When it comes to education or non-profit, uh, uh, non-profit, uh, European Union is better than anybody else, which is not exactly the best way to attract capital, but at least it position Europe uh, as a distinctive player with the rest of it. In the education, we are head to head with the US. Uh, industry, we're lagging behind. Government, we are always, uh, on the same page on, on the other. So there are no major problem. Where is the where is the problem? Hardware investment, physical investment. The US has uh, the largest share of, of data center in the world. Uh, Europe is fragmented. This is Europe. Europe has only 16% of global hyperscale capacity uh, in the world. Less than, well, on, on, on the same page as, as China, but you know, one third, less than one third with respect to the United States. This is a major uh, 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 limitation. Now, without computing power, without without sheer sheer force, brute force, uh, there is very little uh, advancement that we can make with artificial intelligence. Even if uh, what I'm advocating is this distributed architecture that is based on uh, the logic of European Union against concentration. So that's why we need the uh, uh, European self sovereign identity framework, and we need the digital euro. The, uh, the 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 framework uh, for preserving uh, personal data is not just defense or, or or it's not I don't think that GDPR is the right approach. GDPR is uh, is prohibitionism. Uh, the the right way is to rethink the architecture, put the put the personal data into a circle of trust, uh, where you have uh, access by algorithm, and not vice versa. You don't move data around. You move algorithm around. They ask access to data through a vetted algorithm. So an algorithm has been, uh, say, qualified, uh, legitimated. And then this uh, algorithm gets uh, answers. They don't take away data. They make, they put questions and they get answers. And everything is recorded in the blockchain for audit and accountability. This is the right of architecture we need to adopt in Europe. Uh, not just, you know, prohibition, limitation, obligation. We need to really to propose the word, a, a, a right architecture suited for a democratic, accountable, explainable AI, right? but this requires a little bit more of you know uh, dialogue between academia and politician uh, on this way, because otherwise uh, the reaction is to close down, to prohibit. Uh, that generates uh, uh, delay. Uh, yes, finally, architecture. Of course, you, you asked about uh, investment. We need to invest in data ecosystems that are today fragmented uh, and disjoint and unsecure, okay? And we need to invest in uh, infrastructure. Today, they are segregated, non-interoperable. We need to, sorry, we need to put them together in uh, something which is a, a, an ecosystem of federated infrastructure where, where compliance uh, is uh, incorporated ex ante, not ex post, uh, where privacy is by design, is not by decree. So we need we need a specific European technological logic. Uh, don't don't leave technology to the to the Americans to the, the to the Chinese and then you know try to rush behind them with legislation, but incorporate technology within the legislation and vice versa. That's that's for me is the, the, it, it is it is a way to to write rules. Uh, not in English, but in, in, in Python language, if I may. That's probably the, the, the best way to bring down the silos between uh, 
uh, the legal uh, uh, and institutional thinking and technological thinking. This is the way for me, to, uh, for Europe, uh, to really be a, a, a competitive player in this arena. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I think your, your, uh, your approach is rather to accompany rather than regulate, right? It seems to me that it's uh, accompanied <laughs> yeah. by a law rather than rather than regulate as a reaction which frankly we, we can't we can't really do because uh the the technology goes so fast uh that uh, you're you're not able to uh, uh just to just react over the moment you react you're already reacting to two years ago right um okay this is this is a very uh a very good uh very good discussion uh i i think there there are obviously issues that we uh did not uh, uh did not touch but i think we've understood that data is really at the center of everything, and, and this raises another set of issues because uh, how do you power the data centers uh, that are uh, 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 that 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 we're that we're missing? You need electricity, and that brings us back to the uh, to the energy crisis uh, that we're living at the moment. And then, obviously, there is the question of 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 powering not only having the brains that does the uh, the the algorithms, the programming that you discussed, but also uh, the chips. That, that compute and treat the information in here. We are on to other geopolitical uh, discussions that 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 put us uh, pretty much in a in a in a difficult, but also an interesting uh, position vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the competition between the U.S. and China. Uh, this is just like to open the discussion and to I mean to open the further discussion I think between us now and uh, the uh, our gathering in uh, Siena in a in a few weeks. But I would like to uh, give the floor to uh, uh, our students here, uh, Alessia Balacchino, Alessia Amore, and Sandra Rossi, uh, who are, uh, uh, I would like to get their, their preliminary, preliminary feedback uh, from their work on the paper and, and maybe ask some questions uh, to, the, uh, uh, to, to, to the speaker. So uh, guys, who wants, to, uh, who wants to start and maybe uh, give us some, uh, some afterthoughts on what you just heard? Hi, hi everyone. My name is Sandra Rossi and I'm one of the three students that is go also going to take part to the Pontignano conference. And we started doing our work um, by reviewing some of the literature that was provided by our tutor, Chiara Carrozza. And we mainly found uh, two topics, two concepts about AI very interesting. First, the uh, transversality of this concept, because we um, we saw that AI touches a lot of different areas and different points. And we think that's very interesting to, to further analyze. And, that, and secondly, of course, the leading role uh, of the, or the possibly leading role of the EU in regulating AI. And yeah, I think the main focus of our paper, the paper that we have to, to develop will be um, the role of EU in uh, in regulating such technologies and also the investments that um, the private and public sector will will do and i will start with the first question which is uh, which concerns the ethical issues behind ai and we reflected on the fact that of course this is a very uh, debated uh, issue and uh, first the uh, generative AI uh, relies on data sets that are uh, often biased because they get information from int from the internet and they're, therefore uh, it can be biased and uh, the, the contents of generative AI can be uh, not representative of the whole society. And secondly, the psychological impact of workers that have to manage and moderate harmful contents generated by AI. Uh, we, sh we think that the EU regulate regulations should also take into account these uh, ethical issues. And we, we think that they should uh, establish some frameworks to control data sets and also um, take into account the training data and maybe establish some um some funds for this and yeah we wanted to know also the opinion of the experts about this uh, I'm, and, I'm afraid you won't have the opinion of Chiara, who, is, uh, who unfortunately has uh, to leave us. She has another commitment, but I, I, I'll be sure that we'll, uh, we'll we'll make sure that we we, we get answers from. Both Sorry, you wanted to you wanted to add something? 
no, I just wanted to pass the word to my colleagues. Okay, thank you very much. So before before I do that, I'd like to uh, tell our participants, our attendees, that if they if they want, if they have some any questions, they should ask it. Ask they these sorry, ask them. I'm losing my English. Ask these questions uh, uh, in the in in the chat, and we'll we'll take them after uh, we 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 make go the, do the go around uh, between students and uh, discuss it. So uh, who else wants to take the floor among the students? Uh, Alessia. Yes, it's me. Yeah, I'm Alessia. I'm also talking on behalf of our other colleagues that she's traveling, so she's in trouble connecting. Um, so I will be very, very brief. Um, I'm uh, following up on something that has already been said, which is first the relationship, the relationship between governments and private firms. So the private firms are having an ambiguous position in terms of regulation because it is true, as has already been said, that they need, of course, technologies and um, among which there is artificial intelligence technologies, but at the same time. Um, there are internal people, so people working in these private firms which are developing these, um, these tools, which are um, really, um, um, they're worried about the potential harms of these technologies. So they're also rejecting this kind of regulation that the EU is trying to provide. So I wanted to ask uh, to the experts, and I think that this is an important topic of discussion, what is the role of the private firms in this kind of framework? So will they be willing to renounce to um, some technological innovations, but protecting the rights of the citizens? And the second question is that of is connected to the human centered approach uh, that the EU is taking. And so the fact that maybe uh, we thought that it could be useful to have a sort of feedback from the um, from the public. So whenever um, the citizens use uh, artificial intelligence tools, um, they might um, find those biases and some errors in their answers. So maybe there can be a sort of platform which unites the public and the technicians that are in charge of the, man the management of these data sets. So it is important not only to provide the regulation, but also to provide new tools to have also the involvement of the public. So thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so we have three sets of questions, the ethical issue uh, behind EI, the relation uh, government private firms, and uh, the human centered approach and the idea of a platform uh, that links you the user with, uh, uh, with technician. Uh, maybe Francesco, because you, you were uh, the train Italia didn't allow you to take the floor uh, early on, maybe I, I will give you uh, the floor to, to try and, and, and answer some of these questions. And then I will go in reverse order uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to get answers from, from our panelists, if that's okay with you. Uh, Francesco? We, we don't hear you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yes. Hopefully okay, we... good. Okay, I, I'm not sure whether uh, Sandra was, uh, was about to say something, uh, the third student. Uh, any, anyhow, I will be uh, very short because uh, I guess there are also some question, uh, for, uh, additional question and some, uh, some answer to be given. Uh, very briefly, I'm, um, I'm very happy uh, about uh, the seminar. My dream is uh, that vision can go forward without me, uh, which is uh, something that uh, happened to, tonight, which is good. And uh, number two, um, I would abolish the word experts. Uh, Paul may not like it, but I really very much think that uh, we are uh, talking about um, about question, especially if we talk about artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, that by definition uh, can be advanced uh, usefully uh, only if we put uh, everything together. Uh, I would I would more uh, philosophers as uh, Eleonora was uh, was saying before, uh, not only computer scientists. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, I would more uh, prefer to talk about intelligent people who are, who are capable and willing to to listen to others. Uh, of course, Paul is an expert. Paul is, was even a, a one of the uh, founder of ICANN. So I hope that Paul, you will uh, excuse me, but especially the European Commission has got a little bit an abuse of the word uh, expert here. And um, number three, uh, my recommendation, uh, it's a very interesting uh, uh, debate, the one that we are having uh, this evening, but I would also try to push towards, uh, you know, uh, at least a couple of ideas, maybe not, you know, grand, huge systemic ideas, but some proposal that uh, the European uh, uh, institution and uh, the debate and the political parties uh, may understand and may may therefore push forward so that we can achieve an uh, an impact. That's it. On my okay. side. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Francesco. So I'm going to turn back to our panelists now, and uh, uh, as I said, in reverse uh, order. So I'll start with you, Carlo. Uh, uh, what wh what can you answer to our uh, uh, to our students on their questions on ethical issue, relation, government, private firms, and human-centered approach. You can pick one question or go three at the same time, whatever you prefer. Humans are in the loop. Uh, I insisted, uh, this is language. So it's, yes, it's the operating system of mankind. Don't, don't consider it technology. It is like English or mathematics. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't perceive artificial intelligence as uh, something exotic. Uh, it is just uh, the continuation of language by technological means. So stay away from this, uh, uh, say, uh, apocalyptic uh, views of... of, of uh, I remember you know, 20 years ago when the when, uh, internet came, came to Europe in the mainstream, uh, I remember hearing the same objection, same story. Ah, this is gonna destroy the world. Oh, pornography, ah, it'll just steal our uh, jobs. It's the same old story. Uh, I invite the students to, uh, to do their job, investigate critically, don't, don't believe uh, uh, in dogmatic uh, assumptions. Uh, ethics, uh, Ethics is about behavior. Ethics is about how humans behave, not machines. Uh, so I revert the, the question about ethics to, to everybody, to your conscience, to, to your uh, personal values. Don't, don't blame a technology for anything ethical. It's, it's, so, it's all about people. So I remember, uh, a very famous book in, in, uh, in the Italian literature is Il Nome della Rosa, The Name of the Rose, written by Umberto Eco. There was this, uh, uh, the, the, the head of the, the, the bibliotheque of the, of the, of the book uh, building, that was Jorge da Burgos. It was a, 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 a blinded man that was scared of people reading the, the, the book of Aristoteles, the, the, the comedia, okay? comedy. So it basically, uh, killed everybody trying to read that book because his idea was that that book was unethical. That book, book would open uh, the uh, no, people to corruption. So do you want to be Jorge da Burgos and avoid people to commit sins? Or you want to be uh, Galileo Galilei? You want, to be, you want to be somebody that says, e pur si muove. Okay. Here we are in front of a new manifestation of nature. It is our responsibility. It's up to us and it's up to you guys. It's up to your new generation to make the best out of artificial intelligence. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Carlo Alberto. Eleonora? Yes, yeah, sorry, because the connection just go down <laughs> a little bit. Good timing, good timing. <laughs> sorry for that. Yeah, I'm. Um... Uh, consider the three points that the guys are, I mean, the guys are losing, I mean, to us. I mean, first of all, I think that companies do their work. So companies, 
are mainly able to make should be mainly able to make profit and to share uh, that profit and also to uh, create a jobs and and works and growth and innovation. That's the main jobs they have to do. Of course, they are social actor in the market, so they still have. I don't know if you hear me because the connection is very weak. Yeah. No, no, we hear you. We hear you. Oh, we were hearing you until a moment ago. Okay, so this is what happens when we're live. Uh, we have uh, lost Eleonora. So uh, let's see. Uh, and I think she disconnected. Okay, sorry. Back. Maybe I'm back. I'm sorry. Go back. For this. Go back. Well, let's let's try let, let's try to uh, let's try to continue then. Now, okay, I was saying that if companies do that do their jobs, do their work, and that's a profit and do whatever they need. On the other side, they still have responsibility in the market. So they have to be cooperation, cooperative and dialogue with and to dialogue and to be constructive uh, with governments. But at the very end, uh, the point is here is that the governments have low knowledge, very low level of knowledge of what technology is. There's an asymmetry you have to face with. And this point is that I do not, I, don't, I do think that we need to have an, an ethical approach in using technology, but it means that we have to know that there are some effect on what technology can produce towards people, towards workers, and towards uh, other companies, for example. So it's not just a question of one to one. It's, a, it's a, so many layers of interdependencies we have to take into account. And so the point is, there are a stream of experts, as, as Francesco was saying, there's no expert, but I mean, there are some people, some people that are involved in studying things, and I can say, they're ethicists, and then they work on how data can produce effects on people, and how the, the, the interconnections of uh, technologies can produce effects, which are um, all the relevant, um, I mean, the, the most relevant impacts on on uh, on society, on democracy, and so far. So, um, in companies, there are some consultancy there doing ethics to support towards uh, um, also big companies. Uh, or Meta, Google, Amazon, the big tech are using our dialogue that man, they're discussing and are in part of discussion about ethics and implication of what they do. All the big companies, IBM, for example, has a very significant team of people that are doing our ethics. It's not just corporate social responsibilities, it's really an impact on it because they do know they have an impact. The point is to, to not feeling, I mean, I do not feel has um at its at its impact or uh using technology should be prevented um by itself just because we want to avoid some risk and i think that it was what um an open discussion and open access to uh data algorithm could be a solution i think it's not a profit solution so sometimes we have to take care that investment uh, do not cope with open access that's the point so is it still is it like always we are in a bridge and across crossing a very sensitive uh, uh, element but at the very end i think that we have to um, be able to invest in skills and people and we have to create a comprehensive people have to have have to be aware of what the technology has i mean People have to be trained about technology. People, people, people have to be un, very conscious about technology implication in their daily life. That's the only way we can do that. There is no way. I mean, there is no way. If you just think about what happened in Italy when we decided to close for a little bit chat GPT, all the young people were going to VPN. So there is. I mean. It means that the sensitiveness that people has towards technology is totally different one to each other, generation between generation. And still, the same is from companies. Companies that use AI tools or use tools that are trained on uh, LLM models or generative models, 
companies that are trying to do very startup, for example, for example, they're using generative AI to um, introduce some new object or new product or new process in the market, are just using a little bit of AI. They're not using all the AI data set and all the AI models there that the open AI can produce, ChatGPT4 can produce. They're just training some services based on ChatGPT, ChatGPT3, or on Bard, on Bing, and so far. So there are some um, opportunities far away. We cannot see it right now. Some others are, are already uh, at, at our disposal. Um, the discussion is very forced on what generative uh, models of AI can have uh, on democracy, but it's still, it's just a part of it. It's not a full uh, moon. It's not, we're just discussing on, a, on the top of, of AI. It's not everything. So don't be aware of have an open discussion of what are which are the implication of AI, of course. Uh, don't be aware of have a discussion on ethics. Don't be aware of a discussion of rules. But just remember, we are just talking about the, what what we uh, feel has is is the, the the most sensitive things that will impact on democracy. That's why we are talking so hard about AI right now. No, no one of you knows how many investments are in as a means in AI, for example, and so many. If you go to, to the data, there are companies that are investing on AI for improving their businesses. And still the discussion is how labor market can be improved by using technologies to uh, prevent uh, accidents or make the old environment the plants more safe for people have a better balance between working hours and working of life i mean uh free time and so far or about health think about health that's a point uh, of discussion and of course having open data set i mean have a data space when when you can make people uh, more uh, cooperative about uh, building technology, building algorithms it can help, but it's not the, the only result. I mean, it's not that it's not the only way. I mean, it's not sufficient. And probably in the other areas of the world, it won't happen. So it's like a, it's a, a very hard path. It's not one answer right and one answer wrong. It just uh, constant process of adjustment that's why us they feel the same of us but still they're not going through the same solutions it's a kind of history that each country has we have an history of rules they have history investments and results are mainly different at the very end okay thank you uh, thank you very much uh that was a very uh, comprehensive uh, answer. Francesco, uh, uh, to, to answer our uh, students' questions. Sure. I'll be quick, but I will build up on what Eleonora just said. Yeah, the history of investment. Yeah, on, on this, um, I think that, yeah, it's time to change this mindset. And I hope that <laughs> the, 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 the EU will uh, change this mindset, uh, which is not an easy task. It's, it's something that it's not only on the side of the um, companies, but it's on the side of the uh, investors as well. Um, but this is another discussion uh, about industry. So, I mean, uh, when 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 you speak about the regulation, I think that uh, best practices has to be has to be used because they are shaping the international market. Now, someone said about uh, GDPR, or uh, we mentioned GDPR, the CDMA. Um, EU is a market and is a relevant market for those companies also from the other side of the Atlantic, for China, for, for everyone who is a, it's a, it's a big digital market. Um, we, for instance, in my field is cybersecurity. We still import 70% of, of, of the products, but those products have been effect, uh, affected by the new rules set up by the EU. So in this sense, um, Big companies are uh, to have to stick to this really want to maintain their business in, in in our market, and this is somehow where the EU is trying to get um, her own uh, or its own form of uh, power nowadays. Normative power, Brussels effect power, EU, whatever you want to say, but that, that that's what uh, we can do. And yeah, Irenora said it a bit sadly that yeah, that they have an history of investment, we have an history of we don't have a Silicon Valley that we know. Okay. 
Um, on ethics, uh, I think that the, the questions have been already addressed. Um, the risk-based approach, yeah, I'm, I'm personally not, not um, I don't think that um, that's, that's, that's always the best. As uh, someone said, GDPR can be, into, or, well, GDPR, leave it alone, but the political advertisement um, regulation can be intended as a um, prohibitionist more, you know, uh, censorship. So I would be very careful when it, when it comes to this and, uh, and, and, uh, and I'm happy with what the others say. And the last thing I want to say about the legislation or legislative procedures, um, don't get dragged by the the easy populist, uh, if I can say, but not populist, I cannot say because Francesco said that we should be sometime populists. But from the easy way of talking that, you know, the EU is making bad regulations, guys, especially for, 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 for you, for the students. I mean, we're talking about 27 countries that are speaking 24 languages. There are three ruling institutions, government represented by the council, citizen by DP, and uh, the commission, which has this uh, expert slash technocratic approach. Um, and together they are coming up with some regulation after uh, trilogues or bargaining, after listening to the industry, sometimes even to the citizens. Um, and, and, and what I say to people that are, criticizing hyper criticizing is okay come and do something better you know with these conditions so it's it's a, as good as you can get you know um if i may add something a bit more personal political on this commission of course the involvement of the citizens and all the communication campaign of the european institution should be improved somehow um but this is a very big topic it's not related only to this ai let let's know ai let's not cyber let's know i don't know batteries uh, microchips and whatever okay the communication campaign should be uh, done a bit better uh, because it's very easy it very easily gets politicized at the national level and and this affect you know trust distrust on the institutions um so Try to, to 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 be informed from different sources also on what's happening in Brussels because it's quite a specific and unique um, place in this sense. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Francesco. I'm aware that we are way past the uh, the, or, the original uh, time, but uh, we have one last speaker, and I would really really want to have uh, his opinion. Uh, Paul, uh, could you? Uh, let us know your thoughts about the three questions asked by our students. Yes, well, <clears throat> I'll have a go. Um, <clears throat> the um, a, a quick observation, a quick observation coming off what Francesco just said, and then actually two things Francesco said. First of all, um, don't underestimate how much money European economy has made out of GDPR and other related things. It may not have been captured in the digital digital platforms it got captured in the banks it got captured in the systems integrators it got captured in the lawyers it got captured i can i can tell you the competition that took place in the east in the east asian banking sector about who was allowed to do back back office operations for for all manner of transactions if there were europeans involved with it all right so you could say it's a form of to degree a bit of a sort of a tax on other people's businesses but it's that don't underestimate that money was made out of the gdpr it just wasn't made people didn't recognize it as being a giving you a digital business um i, I my original i originally trained as a lawyer and historian i had a, I had a great bully i worked in government i've set my own businesses up i've you know very heavily into this dig digital governance debates and one of my sort of few lessons i've learned in life is um it's the it's trying to get that right balance. I think Francesco was coming to this. It's trying to get that balance about what you can actually do with regulation, and then what have you got to do about the simple power of scale of private capital and private markets? Governments simply cannot achieve the outcomes that large applied capital and labour and data can in, in in big markets, but they can they can mould that and influence it. And this is where I keep coming back to the European Union has 450 million citizens and they can be actors within that market as consumers. And the way in which that gets structured and empowered can have a huge impact on the flows of those capitals and the flows of the skill process. 
that you won't necessarily get by saying, we'll now pass another piece of legislation, which is GDPR Mark II, except it's got 653 provisions and it's got, you know, that, that has some impact, I don't underestimate that, but sometimes it's the subtler and push the, push the, push the, push the boundaries of the bit or push the, push the water flow to flow that way, not this way, that can have some of the, some of the, some of the biggest impacts. So I think to that question about being human centered versus regulation, uh, that hasn't got to be a distinction. It could be a, a nuance of the nuance, nuance of the two. So, um, uh, you know, I, I, and that's sort of where we've been going in our thinking. But I, I do think that's something. And and on a political point, um, our experience in a lot of capitals, but certainly experience in Brussels and also on the other side of the Atlantic as well, is we are at a time where these principles are as attractive to those on the on the left of centre as they are on the right of centre potentially for different reasons, but they are attracted to both. And what we're also hearing is even large corporates, the large platforms and others, they know they are facing a future of sovereign risk. And so what they actually want is they're looking for people to give them a pathway forward. You know, the chat GPT, the, the AI community has got its concern about general, general AI and where that could all go. But even the algorithmic community is sitting in the same space knowing that the let it rip stage of, it, that of, the, of their opportunities is gone. And so I think uh, there'll be an interesting dialogue with those players at the right time. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. And I think uh, this is where we're probably going to end our uh, discussion, which is 25 minutes, uh, which has gone 25 minutes beyond the, uh, uh, the original uh, schedule. So my apologies uh, to Vision for uh, not keeping it under the uh, the set time, but this was uh, so fascinating. I think we would have lost out uh, by giving ourselves uh, these uh, 25 minutes. We'll obviously continue this discussion uh, in uh, just a uh, few weeks at the uh, full Siena conference on the future of uh, Europe. And uh, on this, I will uh, maybe give the floor uh, to, uh, uh, to Francesco Grillo, uh, for some uh, final uh, thoughts and look forward to seeing you all in uh, Siena on 8th, 9th and 10th of June uh, 2023. Thank you everyone. No, uh, just very, very few seconds to both to thank you uh, on, on the top. Uh, you, you were a great uh, chair for a, also a rather uh, chaotic discussion at some, some point, a very creative, uh, very productive. Um, uh, just a very quick note, we will also have uh, uh, a number of inputs, like, for instance, uh, Paul's proposal on, uh, on data, uh, which um, that is very, very interesting. Uh, we will also have uh, uh, Carlos Berto's slides and the one uh, uh, paper that we are finalizing uh, on uh, how the recovery resilience facility, the big uh, European uh, uh, investment uh, facility is uh, is uh, spending money on uh, on digital. So a number of inputs, which will they will be very very useful to to enrich uh, a already very rich uh, discussion. So thanks again to everybody and especially Thibault. Thank you so much. And thank you to the panelists who did a fantastic job uh, giving us a good enlightening us on the subject and the great questions. Uh, and the great work of the students. Thank you very much, everybody, and see you in a few weeks. Bye bye. Looking forward. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.